Before we have a go at this particular question, right, what we're going to have a look at this morning are just further applications on what can we do now that we have these things up our sleeves, vector equations of lines. Can you help me remember, why did we introduce vector equations of lines? We were actually pretty good at representing lines, or we were pretty good at representing lines without vectors. Why did we feel the compelling need to say, for example, um, if I want some line uh, R, can you help me remember? I think we start with an A customarily, right? What's this thing? It has a name. It's the position vector. It's like, okay, first, to get to represent this line, get onto the line, get there somehow, and then what do we add? Lambda. Yeah, we, we put in um, some constant coefficient. It's the parameter. We can change it, right? And we multiply by a, 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 a well, yeah, another, another vector, right? Uh, and this is a different vector. It's not the position vector. We called it the direction vector because it's like we get onto the line and then you think about well now which way are you facing right and you can have you know the opposite version of b and you'll still be on the line you can have any multiple of b and you'll still be on the line um, why did we introduce this like why did we abandon the idea of a cartesian equation for a line in three dimensions yeah so there's only one variable lambda instead of three x, y, and z. Ah, very good. So we knew actually that underneath this, there are the three um, variables that we need for three dimensions. But it's just kind of a mess, right? We would, uh, in parallel to this, we would say something like x, y, z, which represents this three-dimensional uh, vector here, can be stated as, well, this is three-dimensional. And then this is three dimensional. So the whole idea of a vector equation of a line is to say, well, I just, I'm a bit lazy. <laughs> I want to concisely say in a single equation uh, what's going on with my line rather than using an x and a y and a z equation. Okay? But as you're going to see in these examples here, it is always important to have those three parametric equations sort of in the back of your mind as you operate on these things. Okay? So what can we do with them? Have a look at this particular question here. Let's try and unpack what it's doing and how we get there. Find the vector equation of a line through a parallel with OB, and then they give you some A and some B. We'll have a look at those in a second. And then the secondary part of the question, which we won't worry about just yet, is the main point of what we're doing this for. Determine whether or not this other point C is on this line. So this is the question in two parts. Let's start with the first one. We need a vector equation of a line. And the first thing I'd encourage you to do is to read that question carefully and note, maybe you want to put, uh, let's call this example one, maybe you want to put a little diagram here for yourself. We've got three points that even before we get to this last part of the question, um, we've got three points we need to worry about, right? You've got the two ones that you're given coordinates of, so I'm just going to call this A and this B. And then what's the third point that's uh, mentioned? Oh, the origin, right? So I've got A, B with reference to O. Okay. Now, uh, this is so important that I think it's worth actually drawing. We're going to end up drawing two very simple diagrams, right? You're going to be asked very, very frequently for some A and some B coordinates like so, like we did on Tuesday, you're going to be asked very frequently to find the vector equation of AB, right? So I guess in this geometric scheme, we would do it like this, right? Here's AB. It's like, is, is that... Is that what you're after? Okay. Now, I'm purposely asking you to draw this and then right beside it say no, because how do I know this is actually not what's being asked? Because it says that the line through A is parallel with OB. Yeah, fantastic. Even the question itself, it never even says AB, right? It starts to give this other information about let's draw another A and a B and an O just beside here. Um, I'm thinking back to in your AP3s, how often one of you said to me, I just didn't read the question. I knew what to do. And what I thought I was supposed to do, I did correctly. It was just the wrong thing. I think of like my seven-year-old son who like ducks and weaves on the soccer field. And it's like, yes, I scored. Wrong goal. Okay, so you need to know what direction you're heading in. It happens embarrassingly often. So we're looking for a line through A through A, right? And then what's the other information I need? Parallel to OB. So let's go ahead and put OB on here. There's OB. And I want something through A that's parallel.
parallel to that. So I guess I could, well, let's try and eyeball this, right? Something like that. Okay, you've got a better perspective on the whiteboard than I do, so don't judge me, please. Um, I can fix all this by saying, let's just mark these in as parallel lines. This is what I really want. Does this make sense? Okay, now let me just hit pause for a moment. Having given you this, and then you can say, yes, this is what I'm after. Take a moment and see if you can work out what the vector equation of the line would be. Remember, we're looking for really two things, right? We need a position vector, we need to get onto this line, and then we need a direction vector to say from that point, which way are you facing? Now I'll give you a bit of a clue. It requires zero calculation or arithmetic. You can actually, if you look carefully at the information in the question, you can just read it off. Anyone want to give me a suggestion for a position vector? Uh, Anger, you gave me a good thought already. Turun, did you? I... Okay, fantastic. So I want to get onto this line over here. I can pick any of these points, but the only point I am actually already handed is A. So therefore, this is going to be my little A. Is that okay? Get onto the line. Capital A is on there, so the particular vector in this case will be, actually, what are our numbers? You can, I can't, literally can't read them off. What have we got? It's, uh, is it negative two? Negative two, negative one. And three. There you go. There's my position vector, so I've got that noted down. Now I need a direction vector. Now what did you tell me last time about, like when you're trying to work out you've got parallel lines, what can you say about the direction vectors of parallel lines? They can either be just flat equal to each other, or like if for example, um, what is it? It's uh, 1, 0, 1. That's this vector we want to be parallel to, right? This is not the only vector that's, 1, 0, 1 is not the only vector that's parallel to this. You could think of infinitely many vectors that would be parallel, right? Could someone just give me an example, just say one? Negative 1, 0, negative 1. If we were to represent that here, um, that would look something like, I guess, this. Do you agree? It's still going to be parallel because it doesn't matter which of these directions you're facing and you're fine, right? Or maybe 2, 0, 2. I mean, it's a bit unnecessary, but you get the idea. You have infinite choices here. Make sense? So therefore, we can say, uh, let's go ahead and represent it here. This can be our B. Isn't it convenient? It's almost by design that our little A is going to be A. Sorry, our big A is going to be A and our big B is going to be B. So 1, 0, 1. Is that all right? So as I mentioned, uh, no calculation necessary. I can just state that our vector equation of this line get onto the line. Here it is, negative 2, negative 1, 3. And then tell me which way to face. Lambda, 1, 0, 1. OK, you happy with that? Now, I remember we introduced this idea, or I reminded you of the idea, that lambda is our parameter. As you change lambda, you move along this line here. Every point on this line can be described by a single value of lambda, just like any point on the unit circle can be described by some appropriate choice of theta. Right? You tell me the theta, I'll tell you where you are in the unit circle. You tell me the lambda, I'll tell you where you are on this line. Keep that in mind when you have a look at the second part of the question. Right? We now have a vector equation for the line. Great. What we want to do is determine, is this point C? Is it on that line or not? My clue for you is to think about what lambda would get you to such point on the line. Let me give you a couple minutes to have a bit of a play. Um, I'm just going to jot down now what this point is because I'm about to put a different question on the board in case you get that one lickety split and you'll have some other things to do. See if you can have a go. Um, importantly, the working is what I'm after. Um, even if you can say, yes, it's on there or no, it's not. I really want to know, but how did you prove that? That's really what I'm after, okay? So, there's the coordinate, C. Give you a couple minutes to play, and I'll shut up so you can actually concentrate. Is C on the line? No. No, it ain't, right? But how did we know? That's the important part, right? Now, there's a few different ways to do this, and I'm mindful of time, so I wonder if, friend, can you start us off just giving like the skeleton, you don't have to like talk it through every line, but how did you even begin? What was your approach? Uh, I first split the equation of the line into parametric mm -hmm. Okay, so we split this off into its three different bits. Okay, so you've got an, you've got an x equals, a y equals, and a z equals. That's the first thing you did. Yep, and then keep going. Uh, once I got the parametric equations, I subbed um, 
x equals to zero to be like the x component of c? Okay, so let's uh, let's just make sure we understand what's going on here, right? Varen has said, okay, I've got my three parametric equations, right? And apparently, if I do go through c, right, the x coordinate of c is 0. So I should be able to find, remember this is me mentioning this before, I should be able to find the appropriate lambda that would get me to, to that point, right? Um, did anyone else begin this same way? Yeah, I'm getting a, a few nods, yeah, okay. Frank, can you keep going? What did you do? You got some version of lambda? Yeah. Some value for lambda, sorry. And then what? Uh, once I found the value for lambda, I just subbed it into my other parametric equations to see if it matches with what was that value for lambda, by the way? Uh, two. Two. So you solved this equation. You had a zero over here, some stuff here with lambda. You tied it all up. You found this value and then substituted it in. Now, you got what? Uh, oh, negative one, five. Very negative one and then five. You got x equals zero, y equals negative one, z equals five. Now, this is a bit funny, isn't it? Because you're like, uh, I was hoping to get four maybe and that would have told me yes it's on the line but I've got this other value so you try and get the right lambda and you get pretty close but you're like oh I'm off right now this is one way to say okay I know something has gone wrong you're correct uh, in that this is not this is one of the reasons why you can say C is not on the line did anyone else have a different approach what did you do Trin? Ah. Interesting. Okay, did you did you all catch that? This is actually really important to understand because just like I was emphasizing, right? Stay with me, Shub. Just like I was emphasizing, for something as simple as tell me the equation of the line, there's an infinite choice of position vectors, there's an infinite choice of direction vectors, there's an infinite number of ways to slice and dice and approach this question, right? Let me see if I've got this right, Turin. Turin, you you tested out x equals zero, you got a lambda. And then instead of taking lambda, you then said, well, I want to get different, I want to get negative one, and I want to get four. That's what I should get, right? Presumably, based on what Varen just said, you got lambda equals two here as well. But you got a different lambda. Uh, lambda wouldn't show well, why. Oh, because of the, oh, because it's zero. It's like, <laughs> fat lot of use you were, right? So you just, you just kind of ignore that. What lambda did you get for z? Uh, one. One. So because you've got, again, it's from a different perspective though, right? You got this mismatch from what you were expecting, right? So this tells you something has gone wrong. These are both fine. I like both of them. Let me give you a third. Oh, do you, Morgan, do you want to give us another one? Okay, sure. Um, so because the equation of uh, the line equation, this one here, would help us to find your points. Mm -hmm. So let's just presume that the equation will first. So mm -hmm. on the left hand side, we're going to put in. Uh, C. Yep. And then on the right hand side, we just put in the line. So we use the left hand side to deduct the right hand side to find out the certain values equal to lambda. Oh, yeah, equal to. That's, we, we just put in everything, right? Yep. So you got this. And then um, to find out the lambda, we have to use the left hand side. Uh, negative two, negative one, and three. Ah, just pause there. Pause there. Yep. What, what's Morgan doing? What's his goal? Like, because he's about to throw some arithmetic at us. He's trying to solve for lambda at this point, right? Which, in some way, shape, form, is exactly what Varen did and what Turin did, but getting at it from quite a different angle, right? To get lambda on its own, we clearly need to do some collection of like terms here, right? So you've subtracted, have I got that right? You've subtracted this vector from both sides, okay? Of course, we've got to watch out for these double negatives. So, what did you get? Uh, to M1, sorry. Yep. yep. And then we're going to go to get that. But then, then you're going to find out that because the left hand side is never going to be a scalar factor of the mm. right. There's not actually a factor of lambda suitable for this question. Very good. Um, it's almost like I planned. This is almost, in fact, I'll even prove it to you. Uh, let me see here. Let me switch this over for you. <clears throat> That's what I wanted. Okay. Here's one I prepared earlier. This is more or less exactly what Morgan said. Have you been looking at my notes, Morgan? Um, <laughs> when you have a look, what are we trying to do? In all three of these methods, right, one, two, three, in this case, because C is not on the line, what we are searching for is, think back to our topic from last term, we're searching for a contradiction of some kind, right? We've all assumed something, that there should be um, some value of lambda that works for all of them. Right? Or if we take our point C, it should give us the same lambda all the way through. Or 
again, to use the language, actually, I think I might have written here, right? Uh, did I? Yeah, there it is, right there, right? We assume there exists some lambda that should satisfy this equation. But having gotten to this point, as Morgan helps us with arithmetic, just to simplify it down, it's quite obvious there isn't, OK? Now, just as a, uh, a postscript to this question, can someone help me to find some point D that is on the line, on the basis of what we have just all worked out? Solving a value for lambda. OK, I can just say, well, I don't know. We got lambda equals 2 before, and we, we gave it a good hot go. In fact, I think maybe Truon, that's kind of what you sort of did. No, hold on. Am I? No, I'm getting, I'm getting all my methods confused. Um, I can take some given value of lambda, and I can substitute it into my parametric equations. Um, well, actually, I think this is, no, it is. Yes, I'm not confused. 0, negative 1, 5. 0, negative 1, 5. That should be on the line. That's what we got by testing out Ren's method right at the beginning, right? Which should make sense, because we're just off by 1, aren't we? So if we just go off a little bit, um, this isn't the only way you could do it, by the way. You could say go the other direction. If this was 1, 0, 1, you'd have a lambda of 1, and you'd be on a different point on the line. Does that make sense? 